Well, this may well be the fifth place that I've tried to park this morning so far. And this very well might be my third coffee of the day. But that doesn't mean I haven't got a great list of six things that I wish I knew if I was starting photography from scratch in 2023. The list is gonna start off quite simple and then I'm gonna to get to some bigger, more meaningful things towards the end. Hopefully you can hear me past the ripple of this water behind me here. What a peaceful day. I always knew I had a good throw. <laughs> Number one is as simple as making sure you're blocking out dedicated time for your photography and I mean an actual day, half a day or even just a few hours a week that you're specifically putting to the side and dedicating for you to go out and use your camera. It's very easy for you to pick up a camera, stick photographer in your Instagram bio but then progress at a slug pace because you're never actually going out and sharpening your skills. Have you ever heard the phrase the lesson comes after the exam? When it comes to photography the exam is actually going out using your camera and taking photos and the lesson will be learned after the fact when you get the photos home, analyze what you've shot, figure out what you do and don't like, start editing them and see what works. Of course, I advise you spend time online soaking in as much information as you can, but unless you then take that information and apply it in the field, then you've not yet taken the exam. Take football players, for example, they have to train once or twice a week with the team, they all get together and they sharpen their skills. You need to be doing the same thing with your photography, booking out, dedicated time and I know life can be crazy and busy but even if you're doing you know a couple of hours a week you're already way further ahead. Next up we've got naming or branding mistakes and sorry if this is you but way way too often I see people getting into photography and calling themselves something like Dave underscore Sony shooter underscore portraits <laughs> or like Sarah sharp lens photography. I'm pretty sure I used to stick like Greg's landscape images or something like that on all my images, like you know the old watermarks people used to put across their images, I mean, come on. This is obviously just my opinion, but either have your socials and website name just as your full name, or come up with an alias that's meaningful to you and doesn't sound like you're a 12 year old on Xbox Live. I also feel like picking a good professional name instantly upgrades your work, makes you seem less amateur. And I also don't think people need to know you're a photographer from your name because they're going to see you're a photographer when they visit your Instagram page, your website, whatever it may be, your work's going to do the talking for them, for you. Your work's going to do the talking for you. Get it right, Greg, come on. Good spot for a snack this, to be fair. You know what's underrated? Pine trees, they're just classic, aren't they? Anyway, on to the next one, and we've got one great photo is better than 10 mediocre ones. Let's say you go on a day trip somewhere really nice that you might not go back to for a long time, and you move around really fast and you try and cram in as many photos as you can because you feel like you need to get the most content from that area as possible. But the problem is by doing that, you're probably going to come back from the trip with a load of photos that aren't that great, and they're just kind of snapshots of where you were. Where you were, mate. What would be a hundred times better, at least in my opinion, is to slow down, properly take in the location and then settle for just one or two scenes that you've looked at and composed and you're really, really happy with. That way you get back with one or maybe two wonderful shots you can post, you can keep in your portfolio and you can be really proud of. Okay, next we've got not worrying about turning photography into a business or making money from it at least not when you're just starting out. I spent way, 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 way too long in the beginning setting up like random print stores and racking my brain about how I could make money from photography. When obviously my time would have been way better spent just getting better and better, getting to a higher skill level and then figuring out how I was going to monetize it later down the line. And it's starting to rain. I feel like every single video that I make, at some point I say it's starting to rain. Might have to run back to that little cabin and take shelter in a minute. At least I know there's somewhere with a roof around here if I need it. You know when it rains and you wear glasses and everything looks like you've got bokeh. Bokey. Bokeh. You also need to figure out through time and practice and just going out and having fun with it whether it's something you even enjoy enough to turn into a business. Because can you imagine you spent loads and loads of time, maybe even invested some money into setting up a business and then it turns out later down the line that you don't even enjoy it that much. Obviously, if a paid gig happens to come up while you're in the big beginner stages of photography, you can still take it on, get paid, enjoy the experience and learn from it. 
But all I'm saying is don't spend all your time racking your brains, figuring out or trying to figure out at least how you can make money from photography because it can be an incredible valuable hobby regardless of whether you're making money from it or not. You want to try and improve those skills, get to a really high level and then think about how you can monetize it later down the line when you are at that skill level where you can start charging good amounts of money to produce people very valuable work. Next up, we've got the genre corner, or more importantly, not backing yourself into a genre corner. And what I mean by that is, let's say you enjoy shooting landscapes. Don't just sit there and think, oh, I'm a landscape photographer, so I'm not gonna bother trying out any other types of photography. One, you could be missing out on a type of photography that you're gonna enjoy more than what the one that you think you should specialize in, and two, Let's say you do enjoy landscape photography, but you live in a city, you're doing yourself and your potential skill level a disservice by not also going out into the city and trying to take photos. The amount of skills and little techniques and learning curves that you can take to and from all the different types of photography is actually pretty insane. So you don't want to limit yourself to just one medium of photography. Me, for example, I'm primarily a landscape photographer and I didn't realize that I like having people and figures and little silhouettes and stuff in the scene when I'm shooting landscape until I really got into street photography because I was in the city shooting people, shooting stories of people and silhouettes and figures around the city. I realized I can carry this over into my landscape photography and it's an element I really, really enjoy and sort of navigate towards. And I get it, you can try a type of photography and just absolutely hate it. That's perfectly fine. But as long as you know you're not missing out on a genre that you're really gonna enjoy or potential skill that you can carry over to the different mediums, which is exactly what I was doing when I refused to shoot anything other than landscape photography. Don't forget as well, you're gonna have a way, way more interesting portfolio if you can show, you can shoot across a wide range of different styles and thinking to further down the line where you are going to want to monetize it, turn it into a job, a career, you can take way more different paths because you've built up skill in all these different mediums. Imagine your mate calls you up out the blue and he's like, yo man, I've got this job for you. I need some real estate photos taken for this house that's going on the market and you're like, no, bro, I only shoot mountains. Hope you're getting some good ones. I am trying. <laughs> okay, on to the last one as I find my way back to the car. And this one is massive and something I'm still trying really, really hard to work on to this day, which is creating actual bodies of work, photo projects, and series. Let's say you like shooting old vintage cars in the streets. Focusing an entire photo project around that is way, way more valuable and substantial, and you're going to get way more out of it than just going and shooting the latest hotspot that everyone else is. I kind of like to think of it like how a music artist would put out an album every so often. You can have a concept for it, you can grow with it, you can put it to the side when you're not really feeling working on it, and you can come back to it when you're super inspired. The project can basically span for as long as you want, and then at the end of it, you've got a solid body of work that tells a story. It's better than just some standalone photos, and it's also something you can look back on from that period of you as a photographer. 10 out of 10 for bench score, by the way. You can give it a project name, you can write copy to go along with it, and then you can release it out into the world. And what I mean by release it out into the world is, you can turn these into photo books, zines, magazines, you can sell them to publications, and you can use them to get your jobs. I feel like this is where photography turns into an actual art form, rather than just taking photos, which of course there's nothing wrong with, by the way. I'm just saying. All right, that's gonna wrap up this video and six things I wish I knew if I was starting photography from scratch in 2023. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got some value from it. Let me know in the comments below if you're working on any of these six things. And as always, I'll see you in the next one.